Missouri v. McNeely, Supreme Court, 2013. Justice Sotomayor announced the judgment of the court and delivered the opinion of the court with respects to parts 1, 2A, 2B, and 4, and an opinion with respects to parts 2C and 3, in which Justice Scalia, Justice Ginsburg, and Justice Kagan join. In 1966, this court upheld a warrantless blood test of an individual arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol because the officer might reasonably have believed that he was confronted with an emergency in which the delay necessary to obtain a warrant under the circumstances threatened the destruction of evidence. The question presented here is whether the natural metabolization of al alcohol in the bloodstream presents a per se exigency that justifies an exception to the Fourth Amendment's warrant requirement for non-consensual blood testing in all drunk driving cases. We conclude that it does not, and we hold consistent with general Fourth Amendment principles, that exigency in this context must be determined case by case based on the totality of the circumstances. One. While on a highway patrol at approximately 2.08 a.m., a Missouri police officer stopped Tyler McNeely's truck after observing it exceed the posted speed limit and repeatedly cross the center line. The officer noticed several signs that McNeely was intoxicated, including McNeely's bloodshot eyes, his slurred speech, and the smell of alcohol on his breath. McNeely acknowledged to the officer that he had consumed a couple of beers at a bar, and he appeared unsteady on his feet when he exited the truck. After McNeely performed poorly on a battery of field sobriety tests and declined to use a portable breath test device to measure his blood alcohol concentration, BAC, the officer placed him under arrest. The officer began to transport McNeely to the station house, but when McNeely indicated that he would again refuse to provide a breath sample, the officer changed course and took McNeely to a nearby hospital for blood testing. The officer did not attempt to secure a warrant. Upon arrival at the hospital, the officer asked McNeely whether he would consent to a blood test. Reading from a standard implied consent form, the officer explained to McNeely that under state law, refusal to submit voluntarily to the test would lead to an immediate revocation of his driver's license for one year and could be used against him in future prosecution. McNeely nonetheless refused. The officer then directed a hospital lab technician to take a blood sample, and the sample was secured at approximately 2.35 a.m., Subsequent laboratory testing measured McNeely's BAC at 0.154%, which was well above the legal limit of 0.08%. McNeely was charged with driving while intoxicated, DWI. He moved to suppress the results of the blood test, arguing in relevant part, that under the circumstances, taking his blood for chemical testing without first obtaining a search warrant violates his rights under the Fourth Amendment. The trial court agreed. The Missouri Supreme Court affirmed. 2A. Our cases have held that a warrantless search of the person is reasonable only if it falls within a recognized exception. That principle applies to the type of search at issue in this case, which involves a compelled physical intrusion beneath McNeely's skin and into his veins to obtain a sample of his blood for use as evidence in a criminal investigation. Such an invasion of bodily integrity implicates an individual's most personal and deep-rooted expectations of privacy. We first considered the Fourth Amendment restrictions on such searches in Schmerber v. California in 1966 where, as in this case, a blood sample was drawn from a defendant suspected of driving while under the influence of alcohol. Noting that search warrants are ordinarily required for searches of dwellings, we reason that, absent an emergency, no less could be required where intrusions into the human body are concerned, even when the search was conducted following a lawful arrest. As noted, the warrant requirement is subject to exceptions. One well-recognized exception and the one at issue in this case, applies when the exigencies of the situation make the needs of law enforcement so compelling that a warrantless search is objectively reasonable under the Fourth Amendment. To determine whether a law enforcement officer faced an emergency that justified acting without a warrant, this court looks to the totality of the circumstances. Our decision in Schmerber applied this totality of the circumstances approach. In that case, the petitioner had suffered injuries in an automobile accident and was taken to the hospital. 
While he was there receiving treatment, a police officer arrested the petitioner for driving while under the influence of alcohol and ordered a blood test over his objection. After explaining that the warrant requirement applied generally to searches that intrude into the human body, we concluded that the warrantless blood test in the present case was nonetheless permissible because the officer might reasonably have believed that he was confronted with an emergency in which the delay necessary to obtain a warrant under the circumstances threatened the destruction of evidence. B. The state properly recognizes that the reasonableness of a warrantless search under the exigency exception to the warrant requirement must be evaluated based on the totality of the circumstances, but the state nevertheless seeks a per se rule for blood testing in drunk driving cases. The state contends that whenever an officer has probable cause to believe an individual has been driving under the influence of alcohol, exigent circumstances will necessarily exist because BAC evidence is inherently evanescent. As a result, the state claims that so long as the officer has probable cause and the blood test is conducted in a reasonable manner, it is categorically reasonable for law enforcement to obtain the blood sample without a warrant. It is true that as a result of the human body's natural metabolic processes, the alcohol level in a person's blood begins to dissipate once the alcohol is fully absorbed and continues to decline until the alcohol is eliminated. Testimony before the trial court in this case indicated that the percentage of alcohol in an individual's blood typically decreases by approximately 0.015% to 0.02% per hour once the alcohol has been fully absorbed. Regardless of the exact elimination rate, it is sufficient for our purposes to note that because an individual's alcohol level gradually declines soon after he stops drinking, a significant delay in testing will negatively affect the probative value of the results. This fact was essential to our holding in Schmerber, as we recognize that, under the circumstances, further delay in order to secure a warrant after the time spent investigating the scene of the accident and transporting the injured subject to the hospital to receive treatment would have threatened the destruction of evidence. But it does not follow that we should depart from careful case-by-case -case assessment of exigency and adopt the categorical rule proposed by the state and its amici. In those drunk driving investigations where police officers can reasonably obtain a warrant before a blood sample can be drawn without significantly undermining the efficacy of the search, the Fourth Amendment mandates that they do so. We do not doubt that some circumstances will make obtaining a warrant impractical such that the, dissipa the dissipation of alcohol from the bloodstream will support an exigency justifying a properly conducted warrantless blood test. That, however, is a reason to decide each case on its facts, as we did in Schmerber, not to accept the considerable overgeneralization that a per se rule would reflect. The context of blood testing is different in critical respects from other destruction of evidence cases in which the police are truly confronted with a now or never situation. In contrast to, for example, circumstances in which the suspect has control over easily disposable evidence, BAC evidence from a drunk driving suspect naturally dissipates over time in a gradual and relatively predictable manner. Moreover, because a police officer must typically transport a drunk driving suspect to a medical facility and obtain the assistance of someone with appropriate medical training before conducting a blood test, some delay between the time of the arrest or accident and the time of the test is inevitable, regardless of whether police officers are required to obtain a warrant. The state's proposed per se rule also fails to account for advances in the 47 years since Schmerber was decided that allow for more expeditious processing of warrant applications, particularly in contexts like drunk driving investigations, where the evidence offered to establish probable cause is simple. The federal rules of criminal procedure were amended in 1977 to permit federal magistrate judges to issue a warrant based on sworn testimony communicated by telephone. As amended, the law now allows a federal magistrate judge to consider information communicated by telephone or other reliable electronic means. States have also innovated. Well over a majority of the states allow police officers or prosecutors to apply for search warrants remotely through their various means, including telephonic or radio communication, electronic communication such as email and video conferencing. And in addition to technology-based developments, jurisdictions have found other ways to streamline the warrant process, such as by using standard form warrant applications for drunk driving investigations. We by no means claim that telecommunication innovations have, 
will or should eliminate all delay from the warrant application process. Warrants inevitably take some time for police officers or prosecutors to complete and for magistrate judges to review. Telephonic and electronic requests may still require officers to follow time-consuming formalities designed to create an adequate record, such as preparing a duplicate warrant before calling the magistrate judge. And improvements in communications technology do not guarantee that a magistrate judge will be, avail judge will be available when an officer needs a warrant after making a late night arrest. But technological developments that enable police officers to secure warrants more quickly and do so without undermining the neutral magistrate judge's essential role as a check on police discretion are relevant to an assessment of exigency. That is particularly so in this context where BAC evidence is lost gradually and relatively predictably. Of course, there are important countervailing concerns. While experts can work backwards from the BAC at the time the sample was taken to determine the BAC at the time the alleged offense, longer intervals may raise questions about the accuracy of the calculation. For that reason, exigent circumstances justifying a warrantless blood sample may arise in the regular course of law enforcement due to delays from warrant application process. But adopting the state's per se approach would improperly ignore the current and future technological developments and warrant procedures and might well diminish the incentive for jurisdictions to pursue progressive approaches to warrant acquisition that preserve preserve the protections afforded by the warrant while meeting the legitimate interests of law enforcement. In short, while the natural dissipation of alcohol in the blood may support a finding of exigency in a specific case, as it did in Schmerber, it does not do so categorically. Whether a warrantless blood test of a drunk driving suspect is reasonable must be determined case by case based on the totality of the circumstances. C. In an opinion concurring in part and dissenting in part, the Chief Justice agrees that the state's proposed per se rule is overbroad because for exigent circumstances to justify a warrantless search, there must be no time to secure a warrant. But the Chief Justice then goes on to suggest his own categorical rule under which a warrantless blood draw is permissible if the officer could not secure a warrant or reasonably believed he could not secure a warrant in the time it takes to transport the subject to a hospital or similar facility and obtain medical assistance. Although we agree that delay inherent to the blood testing process is relevant to evaluating exigency, we decline to substitute the Chief Justice's modified per se rule for our traditional totality of the circumstances analysis. For one thing, making exigency completely dependent on the window of time between an arrest and a blood test produces odd consequences. Under the Chief Justice's rule, if a police officer serendipitously stops a suspect near an emergency room, the offer may conduct a non-consensual warrantless blood draw even if all agree that a warrant could be obtained with very little delay under the circumstances, perhaps with far less delay than an average ride to the hospital in the jurisdiction. This rule would also distort law enforcement incentives. As with the state's per se rule, the Chief Justice's rule might discourage efforts to expedite the warrant process because it categorically authorizes warrantless blood draws so long as it takes more time to secure a warrant than to obtain medical assistance. On the flip side, the requirement of independent judicial oversight turns exclusively on the amount of time that elapses between an arrest and BAC testing could induce police departments and individual officers to minimize testing delay to the detriment of other values. Three, the remaining arguments advanced in support of a per se exigency rule are unpersuasive. The state and several of its amici, including the United States, express concern that a case-by-case -case approach to exigency will not provide adequate guidance to law enforcement officers deciding whether to conduct a blood test of a drunk driving suspect without a warrant. The Chief Justice and the dissent also raise this concern. While the desire for a bright line rule is understandable, the Fourth Amendment will not tolerate adoption of an overly broad categorical approach that would dilute the warrant requirement in a context where significant privacy interests are at stake. Moreover, a case-by-case -case approach is hardly unique within our Fourth Amendment jurisprudence. Numerous police, and police actions are judged based on fact-intensive totality of the circumstances analyses 
rather than according to categorical rules, including in situations that are more likely to require police officers to make difficult split-second judgments. No one can seriously dispute the magnitude of the drunken driving problem or the state's interests in eradicating it. Certainly, we do not. While some progress has been made, drunk driving continues to exact a terrible toll on our society. But the general importance of the government's interest in this area does not justify departing from the warrant requirement without showing exigent circumstances that make securing a warrant impractical in a particular case. To the extent that the state and its amici contend that applying the traditional Fourth Amendment totality of the circumstances analysis to determine whether an exigency justified a warrantless search will undermine the governmental interest in preventing and prosecuting drunk driving offenses, we are not convinced. As an initial matter, states have a broad range of legal tools to enforce their drunk driving laws and to secure BAC evidence without undertaking warrantless, non-consensual blood draws. For example, all 50 states have adopted implied consent laws that require motorists as a condition of operating a motor vehicle within the state to consent to BAC testing if they are arrested or otherwise detained on suspicion of a drunk driving offense. Such laws impose significant consequences when a motorist withdraws consent. Typically, the motorist, motorist's driver's license is immediately suspended or revoked, and most states allow the motorist's refusal to take a BAC test to be used as evidence against him in a subsequent criminal prosecution. 4. The state argued before this court that the fact that alcohol is naturally metabolized by the human body creates an exigent circumstance in every case. The state did not argue that there were exigent circumstances in this particular case because a warrant could not have been obtained within a reasonable amount of time. In his testimony before the trial court, the arresting officer did not identify any other factors that would suggest he faced an emergency or unusual delay in securing a warrant. Here in its own courts, the state based, excuse me, Here and in its own courts, the state based its case on an insistence that a driver who declines to submit to testing after being arrested for driving under the influence of alcohol is always subject to a non-consensual blood test without any precondition for a warrant. That is incorrect. Because this case was argued on the broad proposition that drunk driving cases present a per se exigency, The arguments and the record do not provide the court with an adequate analytic framework for a detailed discussion of all the relevant factors that can be taken into account in determining the reasonableness of acting without a warrant. It suffices to say that the metabolization of alcohol in the bloodstream and the ensuing loss of evidence are among the factors that must be considered in deciding whether a warrant is required. No doubt, given the large number of arrests for this offense in different jurisdictions nationwide, cases will arise when anticipated delays in obtaining a warrant will justify a blood test without judicial authorization, for in every case the law must be concerned that evidence is being destroyed. But what inquiry ought not to be pursued here, where the question is not properly before this court? We hold that in drunk driving investigations, the natural dissipation of alcohol in the bloodstream does not constitute an exigency in every case sufficient to justify conducting a blood test without a warrant.